before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am back here today with Doug Kramer from Dazed But Not Confused. How are you doing today, Doug? Good, Bryce. Thanks for having me on again. Looking forward to this. Of course. I, we were just chatting off camera, you guys, and I thank you guys so much for all the positive feedback. Um, I knew there was a reason why I wanted to get Doug on my channel. I know you've been such a refreshing voice of reason for a lot of people um, that that I have on my channel, especially they've really enjoyed all the hard work that you've done in your own research and deconstructing from your own experience. And sometimes I know those go hand in hand. But speaking of that, Doug, we were going to kind of talk about today kind of a hodgepodge of things, but starting with like controlled opposition and i know there's a lot going on in the scientology world this week and the trauma that comes from being in a high controlled situation and how that can play itself out so just to kind of get started doug i'm going to let you kind of kick this conversation off with where you what you want to say about any of this or where you, where you want to go with this Sure. We actually just covered it on the channel. We have a weekly Q and A on Sunday night, Bryce, where, you know, I knew that was going to come up. So we covered a lot of it in there and maybe I could give you the video to link it in the description yeah, box. Sure. If you feel like it, sure. people really want the deep dive, but I don't want to hit your audience with a bunch of names in this community that they won't know. Right. But, but, but the gist of it to start out with, and then we'll see where it goes is that, um, so we were in lockdown in Jan or when did that start 2020 like march 2020 right i think it was march 20th 2020 something like that and then a couple months later just because we were locked down i just spontaneously started talking out and the third video i did without knowing what the hell i'm doing using my shitty government phone you know trying to find a place to shoot where i kept ever since the dude poster in the background from the big lebowski the third video i talked about was warning people about the controlled opposition I'm sure your audience knows what that means, but if they don't, what it means is once you get out of Scientology, that's just step one. First, you have to deprogram from it. Uh, by the way, I'm sure this is obvious, but these are all my opinions as a, a, just a random ex-cult member trying to get out of this thing. I'm not a psychologist. This could be totally wrong. I, I'm not professionally trained or anything. I'm just sharing my opinions. But for me, and why it was video number three when I just started out, is there's many layers to get out of the cult mentally, not just physically. And then unbeknownst to me, which pisses me off even more than Scientology, because these are people that should know better and actually take advantage of people and re-traumatize them. There's a whole controlled opposition in the ex-Scientology community, which I'm sure exists in all the ex-cult communities, whether it's XJWs, Mormons, or whatever. So it's not unique, but it took me years going through the different cast of characters that I trusted, not least the superheroes that come out of the cult, um, to find out that they're basically full of shit. I mean, you know, if you want to get right down to it and on a more evil, evil level, because some of them don't get Scientology out of their brain, they still use the training that they have to manipulate. Um, they might use fair game tactics, uh, within the ex cult community. They take what they learned often and short of decompression, they carry it over into the ex Scientology community where they can even hide more like a snake in the grass because if you're out of the cult, you must be good. And you couldn't possibly be still a Scientologist in your mind. So the third video was about, I called it the Goonies. And it's about these idiots, these mean people that um, hornswoggle you back into the cult. Often they still practice Scientology. They're called indie Scientologists. 
and they might rope you into their own pay-as-you-go service on their own version of the bridge so that's that's um that's those are some of the layers that it takes i think to get out of a cult and when you finally leave and whatever that involves losing your family and just the physicality that your life has to change you still have to get the assholes you know l ron hubbard shit out of your brain totally to not keep acting in the same devious way that might even be unbeknownst to you because it's subconscious programming so just to get that shit to come out to find out what your programming is let alone surviving all the superstars in the x community um it's a fucking challenge man and so many people never get out of scientology not least because of getting caught up in seemingly good people that are actually there to control them as well because they haven't healed in yeah. my opinion yeah it we were talking off camera Doug, because i know you've you've mentioned a lot of your your videos that you're kind of on the fringes and i kind of feel that way mm -hmm. i was telling you off camera that um, myself, a few other people that I that I become really good friends with that we met on YouTube um, and been filming together for years now, kind of found ourselves in like the truther community, which to, in my opinion is also a cult mm -hmm. at this point. And um, I've spoken up a lot about, I started noticing controlled opposition within the truther community as well. And I started speaking up about it because things weren't making sense. And it was like, how dare you question this person? How dare you question this theory? when in reality it seems like even in my situation with the truthers they were acting even more violent mm -hmm. and even more brainwashed than the quote unquote normies yeah. that they claim they don't want to be like and i i i experienced a lot of blowback from challenging um certain theories and and i it's so funny the fair game thing i was telling you a little bit off camera about my experience with um one of these telegram cults um and i can link again guys i'll link that i did a live covering it i'll, I'll put that down in the description box below as well so you guys can see if you want to see the whole story but regard at the end of the day i stopped filming or doing shows with these people because the guy had done some shady stuff and because i did that they created a total smear campaign on me i mean almost cost me my life my my literal life was put into danger and so these tactics, and I said, this is a lot like fair gaming from Scientology. It's, it's complete lies made up to try to, because I basically, and I wasn't even going to say anything about me leaving the show. I was just going to leave it. And I was forced to then say something because of the danger my life was put in. And thank God the police are working with me. I am working with a detective to hopefully get charges through on, on some criminal behavior that's happened. But this is very real, Doug. I mean, it's not, it doesn't just come from like these big quote unquote cults we see out there, but it's coming from like, t this stuff is everywhere. The controlled opposition in every community, isn't it? I mean, I haven't been in them, but I would imagine, I know it's not unique to Scientology. And if you had a XJW and you had an ex um, Mormon on here as an example, if they got, if they weren't part of the controlled opposition themselves, right. And they kind of walked the whole path out. To me, it's there's a path into the cult, and it depends on elements that are unique to the individual. Is your family in it? Did you get friends into it? Were you born into it? Did you get into it when you were later? So you have some life experience to fall back on, et cetera. Right. But I bet you it exists not just in the X community, but in general. Like if you want to put it on the world stage, Bryce, and what you're talking about, you got the official narrative where it's, you know, take night vaccines and don't question. And then you've got Q on the other side of that which is created by the very nefarious fucks so that you'll fall into that if you the best way to lead the opposition of course is to control it right the famous right. phrase absolutely so you're going to create something like q like scientology to lead people in with seeming truths and there is some truth in there to then lead them into a cul-de-sac and trap them and that reminds me kind of of that video that you did which was awesome about the twin flames universe where they you know like scientology they take some concept or basic kernel of truth that could be true and then they because you, you don't like the alternative you know that's bad and then before it's it's like polarities right so before right. you know it you're in another trap that might even be worse than just listening to officialdom exactly you know, exactly right?
Yeah, it's it's wild. And I'm actually, you know, I was telling you, uh, Doug, off camera, I had a lot of people requesting you do a review of the Twin Flame uh, cult, the docuseries that came out. I'd love so, to do that with so you. Spoiler, we're going to bring them back on, guys. <laughs> I can't wait for that one because I find that fascinating. And it's an easy scam to break down uh, more complex things, too. It's just <laughs> such a sick scam. And it's such a good example because it is, as my boyfriend said, like it's an easy grift. Like everybody totally. has been at this point where they've been heartbroken over a relationship and they want to find meaning. And they, and that just shows you guys, all these people walk around and say, Oh, I, I could never get in a cult. I can never get cut. Yes, you can. Absolutely. You can, you get to a vulnerable place in your life and you're trying to find meaning and you're trying to ease that pain. You can very easily get sucked into a cult. Um, these were very, uh, with most cases, I find a lot of, I, you know, what's what's shocking to me, Doug is, and well, not shocking, but interesting is, with all of you guys who are ex-Scientologists who didn't really have a traditional quote-unquote education because you were with Scientology, I find you guys to be some of the most intelligent, the way you speak, the way you articulate, super, super intelligent. And that's the thing about cults, Thanks. guys, is they don't want dumbasses. Cults don't want dumbasses. They want sm they want people that are going to make them look good. True. You know? Highly intelligent people that are going to speak well and make them look good, Right. And tyrants that will work up the ranks, you know, that they all, they, I think they need all kinds. And again, I'm no expert. I got hooked because I was, a, I was a dreamer. And like I told you, I popped out of the womb and said, officialdom can kiss my ass. I'm not going to work the nine to fiver like my parents. The, the society, even as a kid, I was already outside of the box because I'm like, this is not for me, man. And I'm going to die if I actually have to just live this ever repeating life and do the same damn thing every day, which is what you look forward to when you grow up. I don't know. I was already a weird kid, but I didn't sort it. I thought I was bad and I'm just weird and a freak or whatever. But when I got older, I kind of um, leaned into that. But Bryce, can you bring me back to the question before I start rambling off of a... Uh, oh, we were, just, we, were, we were just talking about controlled opposition and smart people getting pulled in to make the... Okay. Yeah, yeah. And like manipulation and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So I think it's um, many different types of people. Uh, it just depends. I was the dreamer, you know, so they were able to suck me in that way. And then also, it, it is, I have noticed that, you know, whether it's Aaron Smith Levin or Mike Rinder or anybody, they're pretty fucking sharp people, yeah. man. Yeah. Part of that, yeah. Bryce, I think, is because we look up every goddamn word in their mother. I mean, to pass these courses, even though they're brainwashing, they're not giving you real skills. They have a watered down version and fake, dangerous version of how to spot sociopaths. That's called the PTS SP course. I won't hit, I won't, it, that stands for potential trouble source slash suppressive person. <laughs> I'm not going to bother your audience with the nomenclature, but just to use that as an example, you're already set into a new reality just by learning what the hell those words said that I just mean. Right. And you add that to a watered down version. In other words, the PTSSP course is a watered down version of how to spot sociopaths in your life, but it's reframed in Scientology where those are also people that try to wake you up out of the spell, say anything negative about Hubbard or Scientology, et cetera, right? So to pass these choruses, though, they're really long. You have to stare at a wall of items and memorize them and do drills within an inch of your life where you can't get one thing wrong. To repeat it back, everything's checked out. You have to make sure that once you read X amount of bulletins, you get what's called a star rate checkout where somebody comes grabs any random word and says, what's the definition of this? What It can be anything from the to some hard word. You have to know words within an inch of your life. When you get to the professional courses and the auditing, they're almost impossible to pass. You know, it's really challenging. So I think a carryover, even though I had to get this guy's shit out of my brain, and I don't think you need a cult to become, quote, intelligent, there was a carryover. And the Sea Org members, those are the people that sign billion metaphoric billion year contracts and work for the organization they don't really do much of scientology they deliver it generally speaking but even they are up all night they're drilled within an inch of their life they have to be perfect there is a carryover like we talked about before probably not totally dissimilar to the skills and bonding and that you might get in the military that does carry over you know what i mean i don't look up words bryce you know once in a while i will that took a long time to get rid of. I don't, there's there's none of these obsessive shit that I had in Scientology, but because I was trained within an inch of my life to communicate properly, to look up words, et cetera, there is a left brain carryover of trying to 
of lining up things in my i definitely think differently because of the experience of scientology but not because of scientology if that makes you sense. already had that ability within you scientology yeah i guess you could say it was brought it. out yeah right. that's it, a great you way you already of had it. the intelligence level to do that it was just you were you were forced to pull it out of you and your dna and your brain from you know to be you know that's a good way of looking at it you know what's interesting doug um in the spiritual world you know a lot of people and i, I say this a lot because there's a lot of like quacks out there on youtube that are leading people down a really dark and dangerous road with spirituality too and one thing that you're as you were telling that story about being stuck in these courses for like hours on end it brought me back to like the teachings of meditation and something that's really important for people to understand and it's kind of the same thing like for seated meditation you should not be doing it longer than 10 to 15 minutes that's it any longer you go into like a psychosis you go into you go into this different oh. reality that really fucks with your brain and that's what i think was happening doug with the scientology courses is they were kind yeah. of dissociating you on Definitely. purpose because staring at a wall or doing that can be a form of meditation like japa like japa meditation is a is like you know omnivashivaya omnivashivaya with the with the mala mm -hmm. beads, but it should only be done for like 10 minutes and then that's it you know, and, and any teacher in India will say, no more, do not do that. It's too dangerous. Do 10 minutes, that's it. And then you go back to your life. Then you go back to making your kids dinner and cleaning and doing your job. And you go back to after, you know, that's, it's just a reset. It's not, you're not supposed to. And I know my boyfriend wrote an article um, a, many years ago. I'll have to see if I can find it. That went very viral because he, he's 11 years older than me. And right when I met him, he had just gone through a divorce and, um, he was a heavy meditator. He lived in India, studied with my uh, Sri, Sri Maya Tiwari, um, K, Sri K. Patavi Joyce, like all these big teachers. And so he got into this habit for like meditating for like two hours a day, um, where he would sit for like two hours a day. And he realized when he was going through his divorce, because his ex-wife was a narcissist, um, that the meditating for all that time enabled him to not take the action he needed to protect himself. It was an escape yeah. for him. And that is not the point of spirituality. The spirituality is not an escapism. It's supposed to be a tool to help you deal with the here and the now. And if he had not been escaping to his seat, he probably would have dealt with the issues that he, he could disassociate better from the, the stress of his life. And again, that is not. And so I think that's also what happens too with these cults like Scientology. They put you in a place where you almost in an abstract way kind of disassociate from reality. So you, so it keeps you in a place of abuse and manipulation, whatever, for a lot longer than you would stay in if you were only doing this for like an hour a day or like once a week. Does that make sense? Yeah. And also I think one of the parts of a destructive cult would be how all encompassing it is because some people that just have read of Dianetics or that's a complete piece of shit, but maybe that's not a good example. But I do run across people that have just done a little bit of Scientology or they never got immersed in the church and they just read books here and there. That's not necessarily going to fuck them up, you know? No. Yeah. But Scientology is an all-encompassing commitment. I mean, you have to sign a billion-year contract if you're on the, in the Sea Org. And then as a public, I was doing it every day. If I wasn't on chorus at Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles, I was listening to the gibberish of L. Ron Hubbard and audio cassettes. I was eating this shit up. And just like we were talking about earlier, right, Bryce? Like, the Twin Flames universe starts out with just watching a fucking video on YouTube. And the next thing you know, you're changing your gender gender while you're living at their house and your whole reality slipped upside down. But that doesn't happen overnight. It no. happens through. Um, and part of that is dissociation processes like the mirror exercise does. Right. But there's other elements where you're brought in slowly. And then also you have the sunk cost fallacy by the time that you're living at, you know, Jeff and Shalia's house. Right you have no money you're locked in you, right. you are a, a coach now um you're yeah. where, where's your income going to come from now that's what scientology and all these cults do but you know you don't get locked in in one day it's a long process where by the time i went from telling my parents to go fuck themselves for 10 years i ain't taken to this shit. it's evil i don't need to know anything about it but like i told you bryce in the last interview they would get me to open up because i was the black sheet of the black sheet black sheep of the family getting in trouble all the time because i was subconsciously angry and trapped by these freaks man that's why i that was part of why i ran into scientology they became my better second family and yeah. my parents encouraged it uh to say the least so they would sit me down 
I'd have a problem with the girlfriend or whatever, right? Nothing too big. Just but they would, stuff. Yeah. And very trustingly, because they're just trying to help me. They're just brainwashed, you know? They're just trying to legitimately help me. They would get me to offload and be very trusting and just listen. And then they would say, do you want to be punished for a week or do you want to go to Scientology? So after I told them, you know, to go F themselves for a long time, I finally, the path of least resistance is to just go take the courses and resist the gibberish or whatever. But they had sensible concepts like any cult. They just don't feed you a bunch of horse shit. It has to be something that makes sense. Like one of the first things, Bryce, was look up every word. If you go past a word you don't understand, it says this right at the beginning of every course that your everything that you read after that will become blank in your mind. Now that's not true. That's yeah, not true. But it yeah. almost makes sense. I mean, I yeah. was a kid, so I felt like I was getting more intelligence by breaking out these dictionaries. In other words, it was innocuous enough where I couldn't see the trap being built by that. It drives you crazy when you have to look up every word. Then when you don't understand that word, every definition of every word, Bryce, the derivation, and then you get coached to make sure that when you get um, checked out on, like we were talking about, they'll have you spit back all the definitions. I mean, you, you th I thought I was becoming a brainiac while I was becoming brainwashed, right. but it's slow. And then by the time that you're in it for a long time, you have everything invested. So you have the sunk cost fallacy where subconsciously you're saying to yourself, because you probably, I couldn't see the trap, even though I was invested, but you have so much invested. By the time I got up to the confidential levels, now if L. Ron Hubbard could have said, anything at that point as to the cosmology and creation myth because that's where you learn it you know hundreds of thousands of dollars two decades you know to finally get to these levels i told them every goddamn secret i ever knew and then probably made some up so they have a file on me if i ever speak out about these confidential levels it didn't matter what he said i was so invested famili familiarly step-by-step -step brainwashing and i've been in for 20 years that there's no way i'm not gonna i'm gonna leave because something doesn't seem right you know what i mean it's interesting when you're talking about like looking every word up because I, I growing up I always had really high reading comprehension skills and that's why I think I'm good at researching because I, I I love to read. Mm -hmm, um, me too. And I think that you know that when when you're when you're reading as a kid you learn how to read and you 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 go from the picture books with the one sentence learning the words and then you go to the little chapter books and you slowly in, in, enhance your ability to read you start to learn that when you come across a word you don't know, you subconsciously do your critical thinking skills because you figure out the meaning of the word by the context of and the content of the, of the story or the, of the subject. And that is a critical thinking skill. So most of the time when you come across a word you don't know, you're going to figure out what it means anyway without even realizing about what it meant because you've read the freaking story you don't need and so that's a that's a, yes. now of course if you're reading something and you really are baffled by a word every once in a while you can look yeah, it up if you're really you know? baffled like, by it, yeah. i've never seen this word before like what is this you know yeah and but, but but most of the time i mean i i read constantly i'm not constantly reading my, my favorite thing to do at night to decompress is i take a hot epsom salt salts bath and i read a murder mystery book like a fiction book i love that that's so funny yes that's i can relate though it's a murder it's a documentary on twin flames like yes. we're talking about or a murder mystery or something on um Iwu, which is this great true crime documentary shit oh i'll have to die well see the funny thing is is my boyfriend for years like didn't have a tv and didn't have he was very Me neither like, well, me and now that he got me, and he's like discovered Dateline and like. So. Yeah, there's some. <laughs> that's funny. There's that's some funny. good shit on there, man. And I, what can I ask you a question, Bryce? What do you yes. think? Do you think there's a crossover between cults and true crime? Because you know, you have on one hand the fanatics that are into it, you know, while making makeup and shit, which kind of I don't know. It shouldn't probably be something to parasocially live through. These are real crimes, people yeah. dying and shit. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm obsessed in that. I like watching a good horror movie, but what do you think about? The crossover between like i'm i'm always wondering why i am into it and maybe something's wrong with me no because i, I find it fascinating i do stuff. too and i like the same stuff i love, like watching stuff on cults i like watching i think mm -hmm. what it is doug is i think it's an interest in human psychology yeah i think yeah. it's like as a human being especially a human being who has the ability to practice self-awareness in observation of the self i think you're always questioning um limitations and like I know when I was in college, I remember studying this concept of psychology where every single human being on this planet is is capable of murder, but not in the same context. So like for me, I could I could never I would never want to be put in that position. I could never think about 
hurting another human being. No way. But if somebody was attacking my nephew or nieces, absolutely, I would do what I needed to do to protect them. So it's a crime of passion. It's a crime. So so people will act in ways of like self defense. But for me as a human being, I I really I'm not the type of person that would ever plot out a murder. Right. Like I'm not the type of person that ever. And that's what's so fascinating. We watch these true crimes and my boyfriend would say all the time, why don't they just get divorced? Like, why don't like this is so so much simpler. Yeah. Her life insurance wasn't that much. Like, why? Like, this is so crazy. Like, why? And I guess it's that I I guess it's why people love H.G. Tudor, like watching his stuff, because it's fascinating because it's 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 peeking through the veil, through the window of a mindset that's not natural to you. Right. Exactly. That's why I'm fascinated because I want to know how the hell, not knowing how Hubbard's mind worked and people like right. HG Tudor, that's what got me into all this trouble. So I don't approve of it, but God damn it, I, I think it's important to know because I don't want to be captured by these freaks again. Right. You know, it terrified the shit out of me. Once is enough. So now I'm fascinated. That's not even the right word. I'm fascinated. I was going to say I'm fascinated by the dark side. I'm fascinated by the psychology for protection. And because I got in that world, it is fucking fascinating because I can't even begin to think like HG and a consciousless person thinks, but God damn it, they're out there. A lot of them run our world. I need to know and get inside their mind for many reasons. And maybe a part of it's just, um, they are entertaining. I hate to say that, but it's so foreign to most people that there probably is a natural fascination there that well it's it's just this like i you know i've said so many times like the controllers of the world like i can hardly control my dog on a leash yeah and they want to control the world i don't don't care what my neighbor is doing like as long and i've literally i'm literally in my life i'm a very live and let live person like as long as you're not hurting anybody if you want to run around your backyard naked worshiping fairies sounds sounds like fun you know like as long as you're not hurting people i don't care what you're doing i really don't care you know and so when when i think about people who try so much to to use other people but then it's like doug it's like whenever you get out of a narcissistically abusive relationship people all of a sudden become fascinated by narcissists because they're trying to understand what happened to them like what what happened to them and that's the same thing that happened to me out of after my years and then realizing for me like i believe that i grew up in what's called a narcissistic system Mm -hmm. and that's a new concept to me at this point and i grew up in a very affluent society i went to a very um elite private school one of the top 10 private boarding schools in the nation there was a lot of abuse going on there um i feel like i have a lot of trauma at 40 years old still i have nightmares about about that school even though i've already been through college and been through school in india i still have repeated nightmares about that place um i feel like the town that i grew up in was a very wealthy town i think there was a narcissistic um system there as well um i grew up with pressure my uh, the bryces my 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 first name is my mom's maiden name and in south carolina the bryces are a really big family the williams bryce stadium at the university of south carolina that's my family my grandmother's first cousin was strom thurman a senator there was a lot of pressure and a lot of um and even in saying this doug like i look back at my ch- I, I do a lot of reflecting on my child i think we all do i think all of us that go through trauma reflect on our childhood a lot to try to figure mm-hmm. out what happened yeah. and um i always it's like a true crime scene in itself right exactly. go back to this like like where did things go wrong <laughs> exactly <laughs> totally flip? it was actually hg that really made me realize that in my household growing up there was dysregulation and i was also i was the scapegoat child my sister was the golden child um i think i was a lot like you doug i remember being in middle school and i have this vivid memory of my mother picking me up and getting in the back seat and having this vivid visceral you know in the in the society that i grew up in women go to college and get a college degree but they don't work hmm is so that they can have co- uh, intelligent conversation with their, their husband's wow. business partners, right? That's kind of the society, right? Wow. So I remember sitting in the car with my backpack and like looking at my mom and having this like, what do you do all day? Like this thought in my head, like, what does my mom do all day? And just, I didn't want, I didn't want that. Life. Like, I remember just having this like almost depression. Like, I don't want this. I don't want this life. Like, I don't, I don't want yeah, it's the same as you, Doug. Like that way, I don't want to do the same thing every single day, right? I don't want to do this. 
And so I think it's, and I, I look, I always say I have a lot of empathy for the boys that I grew up with, um, you know, my childhood guy friends, because, you know, even though my memories of them are them with Ninja Turtle shoes on and light up sneakers and, you know, the innocence, oh, yeah. but I, I think about the pressure that they had as being men, growing into men in this, in, in this society where they had the pressure of supporting a family of, uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's everywhere. These, these systems, and when you're not comfortable with that, you do feel like you're, and you're the empathetic one as well. You do feel like you feel that dysregulation. You do feel like everything's your fault. And you do feel like you're wrong. And that, and there's a lot of healing that has to come from that in that in, in of itself that you're not wrong. You're not a bad person. You're just not, that's just not your Dharma. That's not your path in life. Yeah. And, um, and so it's, um, anyway, it's, it's, I think that, that with, with understanding the way these things work, from a, a more analytical perspective, like being able to observe it, you start to understand that there's nothing wrong with you, that you just fell victim to something that wasn't natural to you. Right. And so it was your, and, and that was your way of surviving. You told this story that was, I, I loved it, Doug. I think you told it with HD Tudor one, the episode you did with him about how, when you really got sucked in, you had been living with this guy and you'd smoke some pot. And so, and, and HD Tudor really summed up in a very simple, but, yeah. aha way as to why you succumb to Scientology at the point do you want to read re because it was so like oh my god that makes so much sense when he said it you know well he's brilliant when it comes to breaking that shit down I mean some of the things I've told him we did a whole four-part series on I explain Scientology and he breaks it down I don't remember exactly what he said about that part Bryce but I know what you're talking about and um I wish I could remember it's on one it's of the like interviews not letting you had gotten kicked out of your this guy's house because you smoked pot, which I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, it's like that's laughable. And yeah, you didn't want to let your parents down or something, so you like yeah, it was like a survival mechanism for you because you didn't want to let somebody down, right? Exactly so what he said in a nutshell, and it had to do with one the reefer madness societal indoctrination about how we bad weed was when you're growing up, you're going to kill your brain cells and you're going to throw yourself out the window, and then there was the scientology indoctrination which is extreme anti-pot and drugs in general and then there was my parents own thing where i don't even think they've done anything outside the system ever so i just thought it was evil and then i was started smoking it when i got in a band around 19 or 20 when i was out of high school in a transitional phase when a lot of people can fall into cults yep. and i was living in an apartment in ventura california i moved out and I was living with this old guy who was like a massive chain smoker. And he said, you can smoke in here, but don't smoke weed or bring any drugs. I was like, yeah, no problem. So I got caught a few months into that. And I had a decision to make where am I going to, I could lie to my parents. It'd be easy. I've done it a million times, but something told me I need to get right with my parents. I need to, as they say in Scientology, get my ethics in. And I had been down there enough where some of these ideas were taking hold about you need to be a straight shooter. You need to be honest and shit. So it was wanting to get my parents love man it was wanting to finally do see so have an opportunity to finally do the right thing so of course it seems like the right thing you know by this point i did start to believe in the scientology i'm not deep in their space opera shit. i'm just getting the ethics handlings and the it started it really did start to make sense the more i went down there right and so i just felt like that was the time and also subconsciously i only looking back at it now it was definitely to bomb with my parents and to get them to like me and also i believed it was it had the answers I, I'm, I'm at least going to get honest because right. you can't lie now mind you the cult leader always lies but I, you don't know that until you get out so i was i felt like it would really s discipline me and get my, and then get my shit together and it, and it did for a while because it it got me off drugs i replaced the high of weed with their hypnosis high so i really felt like i could get high without getting high i was like wow these i'm going to take to this auditing because according to my parents and l ron hubbard i mean i feel like i'm stoned but they're saying i'm getting re new revelations i'm going spiritually free i could definitely get addicted and get into this of course they have electricity running through your body while you're holding their e-meter which yeah. adds to the endorphins i mean there's a whole thing about why you get high and dissociate and stuff and it feels good so that was easy to replace um I could have skipped all this if I knew even a little bit about cults and the shit I know now, just the bite model and stuff, but I didn't know anything about this, you know? So it just seemed like it completely natural. I'm a fuck up. I'm going to not lie to my parents. I was really proud of me. They were in New Mexico at the time when I um, called them and told them this. I'm going to become a Scientologist. I got busted for pot. Here's what's going down. And they 
we bonded like never before. They they were absolutely blown away. And, and it was all lights out after that. Isn't that this, this, this thing though? I think we're always looking, we're, we're all, and that's one thing I was telling you off camera, like one thing my, my trauma therapist, kind of a revelation to me is we are always all still that little boy and that little girl that yeah. are looking for love from the two totally. people that are supposed to love us unconditionally. And that's one thing HD Tudor had said that kind of reiterated what my therapist has said when he talked about regulated parents and dysregulated parents. And that explains why there's lots of kids who grow up in with very wealthy parents and very privileged societies that are messed up because their parents weren't regulated. But you can have kids that come from really poverty stricken areas, but they had regulated parents. And so they're mm -hmm. strong, healthy adults because they had that nurture and that security as a child. And when you're, when you don't have a dysregulated home life, as a child, you were constantly on shaky grounds. You were constantly, um, I mean, the first time I, I started having night terrors, which um, for you don't know, know what that is, it's like sleepwalking, but in a nightmare where you get out of the bed and run. And yeah. so I started, that, that started for me when I was 14 years old. I was in the eighth grade. I started having night terrors. And I remember it. My mother would like, ha like get me out of the garage, like, and, and, you know, and of course for the eighties and nineties babies that are watching therapy, wasn't a, a big thing back then. It, you don't, you didn't go to therapy. Right. And, um, you know, my parents probably should have figured out what, what was going on, but, but, um, I'll just be very vulnerable, open and vulnerable since, you know, I, I, when I was in high school, I, um, had two situations with a doctor once and I, there's a name for this and I, forgive me guys. I can't remember what the medical name for it is, but it's for girls when your uterus falls out. Um, that happened to me when I was in high school and I was running cross country and they had to go and push it back in. And usually it's a wow. sign of extreme sexual assault um, for children. And I have no, like, I don't have, I don't have a lot of memories of high school. I have, I, um, I had another incident with a, a pediatrician where she believed that I was experiencing sexual assault and my mother was in the room with me and my mother completely shut it down and wouldn't talk about it. Um, but I was physically showing signs of that. And um, I will tell you guys, like in high school, I, I, when I moved back to Atlanta from LA, I met up with an old high school friend that a guy I used to be really good friends with. And we were getting a drink and he was like, um, you remember that trip we took in high school? And I was like, no, you're wrong. I wasn't, I don't have any memory of this. I, I swear you're thinking of the wrong person. Well, the next weekend we met up again and he had gone and found a box of, of pictures, you know, back in the day, kids who are watching, we didn't have cell phones. You had to actually take a picture and get it and get it developed. Um, and there I was on this trip and I have no memory, like no really? memory of it whatsoever. And so, and that was in my twenties. So I started to realize at that point that there was something that had gone on some abuse that had gone on in my child that was beyond. Um, I still to this day have night terrors. I have to, um, um, my boyfriend is aware of it. So he's, he's had to put me back in bed before. Um, when I, and when I'm by myself, I have to lock my bedroom door at night. So I don't leave the house. Um, and that is a sign of CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And I've, uh, I, EMDR really helped me a lot, but this stuff guys, and I still don't have any like clear memories of, of, of the details of what happened to me. Um, but the thing is too, Doug, like when you think about that with trauma, when there's so much underlying abuse that's happening and your parents, like I've had to come to accept as an adult that I was not protected. And one of the, and I know if my mother's watching, that's probably going to crush her to hear that. And I do understand that for like my mother, it was traumatic for her too. And all she needed to do, if she just shut down and ignored it, then it would go, you know, she was doing the best she could too. But um, one of the hardest traumas for someone to process is betrayal, betrayal yeah. trauma. And one of the worst types of betrayal trauma is with your parents. Mm -hmm. That is worse than any girlfriend, boyfriend, sibling is your parents. And what it sounds like, I'm not trying to like put words in your mouth, Doug, or anything, but it sounds like with the Scientology, it was like your parent. Well, and they did, right? They betrayed you for this for scientology yeah. and that's that's hard to process that is a really hard thing to process as a child because no matter yeah. 40 50 60 you're still that little boy and those are still your parents right and i had to go through all those little boy traumas and i had to do so much work bryce that i had to kill him off of my head a long time ago and I have to accept that I have to get away from these people because it is a trip that, and I think that they really do love me. 
and they really were trying to help me but they have their own trauma and my mom was manipulative i hate to i always hate saying that because we're communicating finally for the first time in god knows how many years and she's changed because now mind you i always know who she is but she's getting older and i just want to spend some time with her and there's an opportunity to do so so it is different yeah it's my mom ma'am and i know she loves me it's it's really it's strange um (laughs) but um i mean it was so like you said those are the people that you most trust so they violated that and could never admit that or even consciously come to terms with that and it's really not their fault in many ways sounds like i'm protecting my parents but they were brainwashed man and they my dad escaped to scientology because he couldn't communicate very well and my mom had her own trauma that caused her to need to control so when you don't know anything about narcissism narcissism system narcissistic systems like you're talking about when you have no information except schooling and the gibberish that Hubbard was putting into me via my parents, I didn't have any reference for what I was experiencing. So I knew I was bad. I knew I was different. And I knew I was the fuck up. And so I would also play that out more because that's I know who I am. So when I got out of all this shit and started to understand, not least with HG's work and, and other sub other people on narcissism before I ran across that guy's shit, his he just happened to pound home and really hammer home some ideas. Right to the point, doesn't he? He just goes yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah plus he's funny and shit and it, it's just ridiculous he's so funny but i mean it did it did really penetrate after studying a lot of books i already got the gist of it but one of the things he said was once you know you go and then i also asked him about how do you get rid of how do you break this tie with your parents it's impossible i mean you have to do like lifetimes of healing to really sever that and he said one thing where um you know it's not your mom stop calling him your mom or your dad these are the qualifications of a mom they do this they you know a parents will do this that as soon as and then he just listed it out he uses logic because he doesn't have a lot of emotions yeah except for hatred jealousy etc he can't his logic brain is kind of in overdrive so what he tells people like me and you and empaths right people that can feel or whatever which is the majority of people it's our emotional thinking right that gets us to go back to justify the abuser on and on but since he has very little of the emotions and looks thinks we're idiots for having them he can just think everything through logically so he doesn't get pulled into the emotions like me and you and empaths and even normals would so there is something about having to do tremendous healing all on my own without any of my parents help without forcing them and knowing that they can't come to terms with that because of their own shit and they're old and shit so they did cause me to have to get away from the very people that i trust the most which is a super trauma but because they delivered that experience they definitely took me within myself and on a journey that would not have happened if i had a normal upbringing that's why i'm half jealous of people that have normal upbringings and hang out with their family on the holidays and thanksgiving and shit while i'm alone and i'm both grateful because it took me on a journey that um made me a deeper person and made me have to learn a lot of shit that i wouldn't have otherwise and i would rather be that than be do you know what i'm saying bryce that's, yeah, that's a I weird part about it. it like i don't envy yeah. my normal friends but on one level i absolutely do but i wouldn't yeah. trade it because there was something about having to work myself out of a kind of an impossible situation i mean this is that it felt like there's no way out of this this is going right. to emotionally get me but yeah. it didn't and it made me stronger and if i didn't have that challenge i wouldn't be who i am today so i accept it and i can't take it back anyway so it made me who i am i'm not a scientologist anymore but since that was a part of my experience i did get something out of having to survive it and my parents i wouldn't be talking to hg tutor wouldn't have a youtube channel any of this stuff i wouldn't have met you and all these amazing people that i've met so it has it's, it's, so it has its people you're you know you're and that's the choice we have when you're saying that i resonate so much with that doug because i think about that too like i don't have I don't have a relationship with my father and um I had to, well i had to make that decision because it's not it was never a, a healthy relationship and um for a girl i was always envious of women who had like the, a daddy you know mm-hmm. women my age who are 40 who still refer to their dad as daddy you know and i was always jealous of that relationship but 
and I know through the, I went through my, all of my twenties being in highly abusive relationships to the point where I almost lost my life one night. And that pushed me into trauma therapy, which I think I was telling you off camera, which we were talking about the mirror exercise. I was like, no, because a real healer won't even bring that up. They'll take you back to that little girl and sort through the, the first, it was the mental abuse of not validating, you know, my dad would do stuff. Like I never felt like I was a part of his family, like his I felt like my sister and I were like guests with his, but his parents were amazing. I loved my grandparents so much, but he was very like dismissive. Um, anyway, but after I went through the trauma therapy and I realized all of my, my habits of dating narcissistic men was my trauma from my, tra my, tra my childhood with my dad trying to heal itself, trying to replay it out to heal itself. So I was looking for the same type of person in order to heal whatever it is that I felt like I broke as a child. Once I realized that the problem was never me, I was eight. Once I fully like realized that, um, I started to attract healthier men and I've yeah. been in a very good, healthy, strong relationship. And it's because I didn't, I don't need that anymore because I healed that. And I can now look at my, my boyfriend now and say, like, if we were to have a child, a daughter, especially, I know she would have a great father. And that's the best gift I could give a child nice. to have yeah. what I didn't have, to have a dad that would like be totally invested in her life and, to and totally loving to her and supportive of her and whatever she wanted to do. And I see that with my sister and my sister's husband's amazing. Like my, my two nieces, my oldest niece, who's like nine now, she, um, no, no, she's 10. No, she's 10 now. Anyway, she's getting old. <laughs> that means I'm getting older. Um, she will tell her. They dad, get old fast. My sister's like, kids the just. They get older. I get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. My niece, Jacqueline, she tells her dad, the boys that she has a crush on in school. Like she gets in the car and like tells her dad all these. And I'm like, what an incredible, I would never tell my dad that. Like what an incredible yeah. relationship. My my brother-in-law, Stephen has, has created with his daughters that they feel comfortable like telling their dad who she has a crush on, that she feels safe with him. I never felt safe with my dad. Me I never felt that level of security with my father. And, um, and that's, and, and I don't know where that came from with him. That's his trauma to work through. Cause I thought my grandparents were pretty amazing. Um, you know, and so when you start to, and I think too, the thing is Doug, someone said this once a long time ago, and it really, when you're young when you're really little and everybody watching will probably kind of resonate with this. You see your parents when you're like a small child, your parents can do no wrong. Like your parents are like, they are your providers. They're the superheroes. What mom says is true, you know? And then as you grow up, you start to realize that, that you maybe don't think quite the way they do. And then you start to realize that, that they're just human beings. Yeah. And they, they're just like us and they yeah. stop. And I mean, my mom and dad were like 26 when I was born. And I know that yeah. was common in those days, but to me, that's so young to 26. Like that's so young to have, a child that you're responsible for. Right. And you just like 20, what is it? 25 is when your brain fully stops developing. Like you just became an adult yourself. And now you've got a baby that you have to keep alive and like support and, you know, take to the pediatrician and, and like, I mean, and infants are not easy. So to be 26 and to have a baby that's crying all night and, I mean, maybe some parents do have a slight grudge against their kids. and maybe Understandable so. I mean, that's probably why I didn't have kids, Bryce. I could barely take care of myself, and I didn't want to fuck up my kids if I had them and pass their shit. Plus, that's why I get my, my parents off the hook. I mean, they provided me. We never starved or anything. Right. Like That's such a hard job, that, and there's no manual. So, you know, bless any parents, and your parents are probably trying to do the best they could, but... um. Yeah, they go out of the realm of being a godlike figure when you're young, and then you realize they have their flaws too. And um, the biggest thing for me, what did they say? The sins of the father are past the son or some shit like that. The thing for me was I didn't want to have kids mostly because until I heal myself, I'm going to pass my subconscious blind spots onto them. And I don't want to do that like my parents did. And it wasn't really totally their fault. But um, it, if you have that's the thing my parents give me gave me certain wounds which without them would have i would have had a totally different life but in order to heal those wounds they weren't really mine but because i didn't go join scientology i didn't you know my parents are trying the best that they can 
but they completely crushed my true self. They wanted me to go get a normie job. I was different than my parents, man, and I think they knew that. And all I needed to do, I already knew what I wanted to do out of the womb. I knew I wanted to be an actor as a kid, and I would bug them all the time. And it was it was being suppressed and having I knew it. But my parents, because they're so normal, they just insist you get a job, you do something stable, son. You don't want to take any chances or whatever. And my true self was just absolutely screaming out. And because them not simply recognizing that and letting me be myself more, they would to some degree. I then have to carry wounds that weren't really my fault. And that causes a um the only way out of that I found out is to um i don't know maybe you level up a little bit because my i didn't do anything but because i had to heal that shit, it definitely took me deeper into myself it made me a better artist which is what i was trying to do anyways you have some pool of, of emotions to to gr drag from but it was never like you said our fault and um and by the way i mean the, my parents are get off the hook because i never had the balls to actually have a kid because it seems impossible and like i'd probably fuck them up too <laughs> well, I haven't, you know, I go through this off and on because I always wanted to have a child, but my life has just, I mean, and you're right without all the stuff I experienced in, and not wanting, well, first of all, not wanting the life that, that they all let led, but then experiencing the trauma, which makes you do, you start to question yourself. You start to go in like, I mean, I think most people watching, I think we've all gone through depression, anxiety, where you're questioning the meaning of life and all these things. And that's what led me to traveling the world. I mean, about 40, I've been around the world multiple times, lived in multiple countries, studied at one of the most um, intense schools in India. And that was all because I wanted to know why we're here. What is the point yeah. of suffering? What is the point of pain? And one of the beauty and what you're saying, Doug, is so beautiful because that is basically what a lot of the old texts say. My teacher, my original teacher here in the United States, who was the teacher that got me into the school in India, he would tell the story where he would be in conference with uh, Guruji and be like, and by the way, guys, if someone calls themselves Guru or Guruji, don't go to them. It should be a name that the students give the teacher. That's another red flag for a cult. You should be a pet name that the t students give the teacher that the teacher doesn't give himself. All right. So he would say, Guruji, um, he's David would say, I asked, I asked Guruji once in conference, what's, is this pain? Is this, or is this suffering necessary? Is the pain necessary? And he said, Guruji looked at me and goes, yes, because pain is real. Pain is real. And when my teacher, I'm fucking like emotional. When he said that, when David said that in conference before I started going to India, that hit home with me. Because when you're in that point of suffering, of being in that womb, of being in that pain, it's real. And there's nothing that can take you really, that's a really pinpointed focus of emotion. There's no way to hide that. And and for people, it puts you in a vulnerable, vulnerable position because that's when you can get sucked into a cult. But if you see it, from a place of growth, it's the best place to be. It's the friction. I, I tell, you know, it's like, I, I use the analogy of a, of a match. If you take a match and you just hold the match by itself, it has everything in it that it needs to light, to, to create that light. But it can't do it unless it's struck against the matchbook. Yeah. It has to be struck against the matchbook. And that striking is not is not pleasant. You know, and so if you and that, but that's the choice you have. That's the free will choice you have. You can take the pain and you can project it onto others or you can live in it or you can pass it on or you can take it and look at it and explore it and discover more about yourself and, and find a deeper purpose and, and find the, and that's why, you know, a lot of times that, that people that some of the most compassionate in wise people that I know in my life are people who have been through the most trauma. They come to this place of being and survived it on the other side. Cause you have to get through it too. That's the trick too. Cause how many great people have we lost that it broke them, but they were brilliant people, you know, that had big hearts. And they, and they don't, there's no, there's not, they're not coming from a place of judge with you. Look, all of a sudden they don't come up from a place of judgment anymore because you know, over by the grace of God, go, I I've been there too. I understand. Yeah. This is a terrible uh, place to be. I, I get it, you know, and they're a great shoulder to lean on. And, you know, as we were saying in the Twin Flame cult video, one of the biggest things, guys, is like there's nothing outside of you that's going to alleviate that. Yes. there, sure. There's no Scientology, no auditing, no yoga, no trust. Those are just tools. The, all these are tools, but you have to do the work.
you have to be the one to face it and to grow from it and create that that it's like what's that japanese art where they like break a vase and then they glue it back with gold to make it more beautiful oh i've never heard of that but that sounds cool well it's like the more your heart breaks the more the light can shine through right it's it's like taking that and and you're right that's why people you know it's, it's just shame that hollywood is so corrupt and like because I think performance art is one of the most important things that there is yeah. in the world because it's connecting you. It's a human, you know, you could be someone living in the poverty of Africa or someone living in Alaska in these totally different environments, but we all understand betrayal. We all understand love. We all, these are all common things that make us have, that's why I think the Scientology community is so popular because even though a lot of people never went through Scientology, a lot of people do understand what it's like to have your heart broken and to be betrayed and to be in, in CPTSD. And it's that human connection. Okay. I'm not alone. Like I'm not, I'm not an, a, a weirdo. That's, you know, this is, it's okay. If, if these people, if, if other people can go through it, so can I, like, it gives people that confidence, right. To continue yeah, to yeah. forward. Um, you know? Yeah. And also, I don't know if it's Carl Jung or someone else, but the wounded healer, right. There's something about, I don't know if it's always like this, but this is why I totally accept my journey. And I'm not, it's weird. It definitely changed me because I'm not sad. I mean, I have, I guess, moments here and there, but it's pretty it's weird. I'm, everything's just fine, actually, you know? And just, uh, I don't know, man. I went through so much shit that the everyday problems, they don't really exist. And then when they do, I don't know, it definitely just removed a lot of shit, which is a paradox because I thought I was going to die. It sucked. There, Why? Why, God? Why is there so much suffering? Why am I? What did I do? Just every day for years, right? But on the other side of that, it changed me where you can't, I don't think you have to, it's all about suffering and that you have to suffer for the rest of your life. No. But there is something about, and like I said, I don't know if it was Carl Jung or some someone else that covers these archetypes where there you know it's nothing when i started to learn some of this stuff i realized well maybe i could lean into this wound maybe this happened for a reason maybe you know well it's giving me the juice for art and acting that's what i wanted that's what i'm doing anyways in other words it makes sense and i don't understand it but like you said without the friction you i wouldn't even know what the hell i was made of unless i got trapped in a cult and got out i don't even know since it's the only life i lived i don't know what it'd be like without it but I hate Scientology, but God damn it, I'm grateful for the experience because I'm on the other side of it. And there, I, therefore, I would never take it back to just grow up normally because I didn't like that shit anyways. It's but then I well, I wanted to do a cult, which is 10 times worse And if I hadn't. But I got something out of it in a weird right. way. And like I said, it was when I understood that when you, if you feel like you're the only one going through the experience, right, Bryce? But then you have a community of people. And then you study other authors and philosophers and you realize everybody's been through every experience. So I learned through these authors, you know, like Philip K. Dick, like I said, everything from Carl Jung to Philip K. Dick to every book that you've probably read, Bryce, and anybody else does, it tries to wake up. And it's like, um, one of the things that I learned is that that primal wound actually, um, it could set you free and you can, it could be a great gift if you frame it right, rather than woe is me. Perhaps there's something to learn and get out of this. I don't understand it, but I definitely think I can't imagine my life without what I experienced. Well, that's the free will choice. It's like you're um, in uh, in the Eastern philosophy. They say we have three different karmas we're working with, and kar all karma is, guys, it's just cause and effect. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I think people make a bigger deal out of it than cause than and it, effect. It's just cause and effect. If you're an asshole, it'll blow back on you. If you lie, right. it'll blow back on you. Like I, I love that. Why, by the way, yeah. Bryce, because you don't even have to be spiritual or join a religion or a cult or anything it takes care of itself just by the way life's yeah, set up it's just action know? and reaction that's all it is and but one of the three kar karmas we we have is inherited karma so what that means is sometimes and i was trying to explain this to a friend once like if you if you go down because you know i know scientology talks about reincarnation but i think they get reincarnation completely wrong because when we look at you know the soul and the body are two different things but there is kind of a roadmap in the biology that the soul is going to pick for its experience and so like your parents are important for that because they have the DNA that your soul wants for its experience. And so like when a, you know, not to get graphic or anything, but when a child is created, an egg will drop and then one sperm will hit the egg. Well, that vibration of that egg and in, in that moment, in that moment, not 10 years from now, not is the, is the karma that you want within your DNA. 
in order. So whatever issues your parents are having within themselves, psychologically, whatever is coming through in that DNA, when that spark of life happens and the baby is created. And that is something that the soul says, okay, I'm going to use this because I need to refine myself. I want to refine my soul in this particular area. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to, and I'm going to use it, this baby batter, um, to, to create, to put myself on a trajectory, to put me in a direction where now then when I come through, I'm going to have different, you know, you do go through amnesia. I believe that's important because if you don't have something to hang on to, you're going to be really see what you're made of as a soul to make certain choices. And then that, that's that free will choice where, you know, you could be hit with all these things and God bless. And I'm not judging people who, you know, unalive themselves or who, you know, because it's hard. It's, it's super hard. But that's the thing about spirituality. You'll just get to do it again later. It's not like there's a punishment for that. You're not going to go to hell or anything. Uh, listen, I think we're in hell right now. I think this can be, I think this is it, right? Um, even Jesus said in the Bible, heaven and hell is within you. It's here in the moment now. Um, and so you have, I know, and this, this world could be a fucking paradise too. I feel that's one of the things that definitely made me more of a positive thinker. Like, I don't think it's going to happen, but damn, you, I could, see, you could see what's possible. Like if possible. everybody would heal, that heal thyself, it could be, yes. it would and be a, it's the polarization for, for whatever negative there is in the world. There's that much, whatever darkness, however many L Ron Hubbard's there are out there, there's right. that much light as well, you right. know? And so, and you're here in this tug of war between the two and you have your shadow side and your light side as well. And, um, and so then you have that choice to make and it's just, you know, in divinity, I, I want to make that very clear to you guys, like in my personal beliefs, anyway, in my opinion, God, whatever that is, source creator is the most loving, merciful thing. He's not going to punish you. You're here just to learn. That's all it is. It's like you're in first grade. Like you're not going to get mad at your kid eternally because they spell, fail a spelling test. Are you like, no, some people do. Yeah. That's how yeah, serious that is, they take yeah. it. But, you know, it's like, it's it's just, you're just here. And so, Doug, you were handed that. I believe in my beliefs that your soul picked it so that you could refine yourself. And then it kind of held its breath as it dropped into your body. I think I just came in here because someone <laughs> on another dimension told me, dude, there's this place you're not going to believe how crazy these people are. Like, they're all under mind control. They're dumb as doornails. I include myself in this, right? So I don't feel like I'm talking out of my ass. And when I get outside of this, this is how I kind of... It's the humor brain that kind of, because yep. it's all silly once you're get over the fear and all this bullshit. But I feel like if that, if they're, if that's the way it works, someone said, explain to earth. And I'd be like, dude, there's no way, you know, no. there's no way that that something could be that lame. And then I would say like, I'd have to see it to believe it. So here I am. And it's like, cause I don't want to, if there is life after death, I don't want to forget this because it's you. I feel like this is a unique experience, whether there's life out there or not, there's something fucked up about this place. And if I didn't see it for myself, especially with the scamdemic and all the shit, like where it's like right in yeah. your face, I wouldn't fucking believe it, Bryce. I wouldn't believe L. Ron Hubbard could do what he did. I These are concepts that are so outside of my childlike naivety, even today, that if I didn't learn this shit the hard way, I wouldn't believe I don't, I still, it's crazy. So there's so much, do you understand what I'm trying to yeah, get across? Actually, even though I'm so not doing a good idea. That, we were on Thanksgiving, we were having this conversation um, because, you know, my boyfriend's really deeply, deeply educated in spiritual concepts. And we were talking about how many death there, death there's been recently. And you guys know why, but we were talking about like um, exiting, like when you exit and some people will say that there's different points in your life where you can decide it's time to leave if you want, like you give your, your higher self gives your, gives yourself that options. And sometimes your higher self will pull you out if it's gotten too much. Um, and we were sitting in the car and I was like, I was like, I, I, I just don't understand why I, I don't know if I, this is like, I'm, a t I'm tired. Like I'm tired of this ride. And he goes, you know what I think it is? It's like when you go to the amusement park and everyone's like, man, you got to try that ride. It's such an adrenaline rush. Like it's totally freaky, but man, it's such an adrenaline. You just got to try it. He's like, I think that's what earth is. Like these spirits, like, dude, you got to try that thing. Earth is wild. Like it's such an adrenaline rush. And so he was like, yeah, cool. We'll try it. <laughs> I can get down with that, man. I don't have any memories or anything and I don't need them. I, I could get down with that. You know, if that reminds me of that, the Bill Hicks, you know, who is the comedian who, took a lot of acid and said life is just a ride it's like a ride in an amusement park it goes up down has twists and shit but yep. some, and then he says some of us wake up and they come back and they realize and they tell people it's just a ride like don't take it so seriously but it's fucking dead serious if you're see this is why i think the world's crazy bryce like <clears throat> not talking about communism or anything but let's just a real 
let's say just a civilization that would be out of our reach even though it would be probably saying like so we're on a planet where we have to work and do all the shit just to be here just to exist and survive so the basics would be taken care of so we don't have to dog eat dog everybody like we're all humans so we should be getting along war should war has always been like this i could never if they were draft bryce i would move have to move to canada i'm not going to kill someone that i don't have a problem with that i could hang out with at a bar I don't have a problem with someone's skin color. Like I can't get into all the shit I'm supposed to be mad about, even when I was in Scientology and even as a kid. So it's just like it 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 all is serious right out of the womb because your parents are pushing you to get the good grades. And some people have suicided themselves if they don't oh, get the yeah. report card. I was just watching a just to bring it back to the true crime. I was watching uh one of the documentaries on one of these big channels. And it, it, it was all about the kid's bad grades and how he had to hide shit from his mom and then sort of led to murder. What I'm saying is the pressure that's put on you just in grade school by your parents and the state as yeah. if these grades to regurgitate the state's version of all the bullshit you're going to have to get it ahead later. It's also serious. <laughs> and if you don't make the rent, you're starving. Like it's right. constant pressure. That's what I'm saying. Like from the outside looking in, a real world would not operate like this like oh. there's I, I think there has to be some kind of deep ass trauma and it seems like it's getting worse but then maybe it's a cleansing coming who knows it's but some, obviously I, something you know we i don't think we're supposed to be at at, at or at each other's throats and and so divided and oh you live in a different country you're a different skin color it doesn't all that shit even didn't make sense as a fucking kid that's why i'm saying i wouldn't believe it unless i saw it you right know? i i'm the same i and it's so funny. I know that like, sounds hippy dippy, by the way, no, but seriously, that's how I feel. As an American, I don't even think the draft's American because our country is, and people are going to get mad at me for saying that. If, if you want to join the military, awesome, do it. But that's the point of America is that you're supposed to be able to do whatever you want that makes you happy. You have the right to pursue happiness. If that's not something that makes you happy, people shouldn't be drafted and forced to do it. That's just right. my thought on it, too. That's why a lot of people freaked out in the 60s and yeah. shit and did move to Canada and it's stuff right. and formed the yeah. whole hippie revolution, even though that was a psyop. But, you know, it was a reaction Opposition. against, fuck no, yeah. we're not going to war. Fuck the government. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and I've learned too, that's one thing I will say in this quote unquote great awakening we're in and we're learning more about the controllers of the world and it's not us versus us, it's really us versus them. I will say I've seen so many people, so many subscribers that watch that have become friends, other people I film with in other countries. People are starting to figure out that it's not the French that have a problem with the English or vice versa or the Americans with the Germans or whatever. It's not, it's never about us. And in my travels around the world, I've never felt in any country I've been in, I've never felt like ostracized because I was an American. I was people are people wherever you go. They're people. They're just people. And I think everybody respects that and understands that. And we appreciate each other's cultures, you know, and now it's not even appropriate to appreciate each other's cultures because they call it cultural appropriation. It's like, no, cultures are meant to be shared. That's why they're called cultures, you know, and it's, um, and so I think people are starting to figure out that that the problem is the controllers, not us, that we, the people of the world, probably would live in pretty good harmony. I mean, there'd probably be little spats here and there, but I think most of the time there would be pretty calmness because most people don't want to hurt anybody. Most people don't want, they don't want to see anybody else suffer. They don't want, you know, I, I think about like children and the impact, like Doug, Doug, you're not a parent, but if you were walking down the street and you saw a child being attacked, regardless of that kid's skin color, you'd probably jump in instantaneously and try to protect that child i think most people would because it's about yeah. human love and nature and protection and you know i i think i think you're right and i think that's um i know well according to the law of one we're about to go into fourth density so that's why it's so crazy right now is it's actually like a birthing process which you know and that's the thing about spiritual duality too guys it's it's like you you know aristotle had a great quote that said um it's a sign of intel of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it yeah so and that kind of goes back to that can you question things so like it, it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can read all these different spiritual books entertain the idea and just entertain it and observe it you don't have to accept it but just kind of entertain it and like observe it and because that that's that's you being the witness that's you you're here to witness the ride that's all it is you know and and um and witness it you know we have these beautiful things called nervous systems that allows us and in, in the emerald tablets thought the most amazing thing i read from the emerald tablets where thought said you don't know life without death so when you're just in soul form when you're just in your soul without your body you don't know death so therefore you don't know life and so all those things that you enjoy 
the the bike rides the 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 flowers the the great music the, the hiking trips that's part of being alive and if you don't know death you can't experience that life and that was like when i read that in emerald tablets i was like whoa that's amazing so enjoy it like even though it's hard and it's you know, without if you don't know pain you don't know joy right if you don't know suffering you don't know love like enjoying that's why we love art that's why we love great movies that's why we yeah. love great books it's it's because i think that's why we like true crime is because it's that well trying to understand the psychology but it's that that we 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 value life you know and so we value and so anyway but but yeah it's um and it i think what you made was really awesome when you said that you know you, you kind of scientology is like whatever now that shows that you're at peace with it you're at peace with the past you're at peace with what you went through and that's because you've worked on it you know, if someone's on a piece with their past, they're going to react to it. Yeah, which kind of brings us back to the controlled opposition that we talked about at the beginning, like in the X community, one of the main things that I believe that it is, is the lack of healing and just taking that mentality over and not going through the, because it's hard to do, Bryce. I told you, I mean, it was natural and organic. I didn't have anywhere to go. I lost everything. I wasn't going to compromise and go back to the cult. So I leaned into it. And also I was an actor, so I could use these deep traumas to actually use it to my advantage but so and i was in my early 30s so i could take it but even then barely but there was something about um i don't know man i think it was my destiny i've always been a freak since i popped out of the womb like i my parents were always weird to me the society was weird to me and the big revelation is and i i hope this doesn't come across the right way because it's not arrogance it's just recognizing the truth like it wasn't me when I was in Scientology. It was the Scientologists and Hubbard. They actually yeah. had it wrong, and I was the only one that had it right, or as well as the others that escaped. Yeah. But when you're in a, a world and it seems like everybody's saying one thing, you couldn't, it must be you. Like you, you, you could not possibly say, oh, I have it right and they're all wrong. But that's when the penny dropped for me on Scientology. Like in one day, I realized Hubbard was, he went from my, favorite guru or whatever and i totally trusted him to oh i see he's a liar or whatever so it just took the um i don't know it, i don't know what the hell i'm rambling about no, do you understand what i'm saying that's, though that's a betrayal too because you you thought you hubbard betrayed you in that sense because yeah as well as my everybody did at that yeah. point my parents and everything and and i thought i couldn't survive it but then all of a sudden would i open up my eyes and question government would i have taken the shots there's so many things that would have happened if I didn't get bonked into um, opening my eyes, man, and using you got smacked. anybody can do this. I mean, it's not like any it's not like anybody special or anything. It's just it felt like a great opportunity because Bryce, I realized that like this was all subconscious. I didn't do any of this. It's like it was all a quote accident. I didn't have the mental power to work myself out of it. I couldn't determine that my friend magically dropping off a stack of cult books and I'm going to read it when I shouldn't have like there's like self something is else. Like there you go. Something I definitely know that you, whether you want to call it the higher self, I hate using the word God because I don't even know what that means. And then people think you're a Bible thump or whatever. Yeah, I call it intuition just to keep it out of the because I don't know. Right. It, but it was like there was a separate part of me, the observer. Yeah, that knew knew how to get my ass out of this when I wasn't really doing it myself. I, the best thing I could do was just follow what felt right and then dive into it, thinking, "Are you sh like?" It was a battle between my programming, societal, and Scientology. That's the rubber band that's always pulling me back. That's the friction, right? That's the the posing yes. Pieces, the but friction. then this this true yeah. self that was dying to come out since I was a kid, it suddenly became more powerful. Where it was like being introduced to this new person. It was like foreign to me. And it was like saying, it's not like voices were talking to me, but I'm putting no, it in, yeah. in voice form. It's a feeling. It's like this. It's yeah, a feeling. And, and an, an undeni it was undeniable, though. There was no option. I can't go back to the cult, so I have to go with this. But it was almost like someone was saying, it's okay to let go of Scientology. But then I'd say this other part of me, and, and then he said, it's okay to get high. And it's like, that will help your PTSD. Like all these things that uh, I'm like, are you sure? So I would just do these weird things and then just follow. I thought, um, I got to get back to real life. Why is my life falling apart? This doesn't make any sense. This is so outside of the norms. Are you sure intuition? I should do that. And it would make me do it, whatever. It would make me do crazier and crazier things. But then I finally realized after a couple of years that that became me now and the programming was dropping. So it was just the true self, for lack of a better word, who I really am. 
yeah. and who I could be that was much stronger finally than the program because the program is enormous price as you know just in the society yeah. just the oh, light absolutely. programming let alone yeah. Scientology there's no way out without some help you from gotta, some, you gotta, something and and I you know it's so funny you're saying that I know you don't like the word God but I've heard it said before that God doesn't speak in thunders God speaks in whispers yeah that's true that would be a that that's how I describe this voice the intuition saying it uh -huh. not, not just very very so subtle and so below the surface so untouchable when you have the programming but the most powerful non-intrusive thing that I've ever met but I I I realize that's just me that's like the real yeah. me it was well, always the, there that's the true teaching of spirituality is that it's you know god or higher consciousness whatever ishvara is what they call it in the sutras it's not something that's outside of you it's never it's always within always totally within, you know and that's what's and that's what drives me crazy there's another great documentary that was just released that i've been watching called let us pray and it's mm. about the fundamentalist uh baptist churches and all the sexual assault and all that it's it's, it's harrowing what some of these girls have gone through it's a multi-part if you guys are into this stuff it's harrowing what's it uh, on bryce where can you find it amazon i think i'll have to double check but it's called let us pray I it's about the out. and i covered i've covered like steve anderson i've covered some of the real um because i'm a huge fan of 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 spirit of, of of divinity i'm a huge fan of of the unseen world of great mm -hmm. goodness and it makes me mad when people like weaponize that against others um which is what cults do and a lot of cults yeah and the people which often goes with the occult which i believe yeah. is a real thing but like we talked about before is it's weaponized and poo-pooed as um fantasy yeah. yeah and it's um and the church is big i i um did a whole I, I grew up Presbyterian. Um, I love Yeshua, which was his real name, his teaching. I, Jesus is not the real name of him. They didn't have the J sound back again, then. Again, there went your Christian audience again, Bryce. That's okay. You're, it's fine. I've already got... Listen, I have I have a whole email. I don't know if I've told you this. Like, I get so many death threats from Christians. I don't take those seriously anymore. You get death threats? I just oh. get them disgruntled, but death I threats? Get, Damn, I that's got, not very Christian-like. Well, the funniest one I got was this man, because, you know... If you watch this let us pray it's all about the male dominated women are literally just property of men and this guy sent me when i started going through the missing books of the bible which is censorship guys you cannot say that you're anti-censorship when it comes to medical decisions all that kind of stuff and you're anti-censorship but you want certain books of the bible banned that's still censorship if you're anti-censorship you should want it all exposed because i i want everything out there for every human being to be able to make their own decisions based on all the information and the missing books of the bible are so interesting and they tell a very different story and there's no pressure on you um yeshua the real person was never crucified because the real god doesn't require human sacrifice that's what lucifer requires that's what they do on those islands in the caribbean with that guy named jeffrey uh that's all i'll say because of youtube but um so think about that for a second like cannibalism is not a part of the of the of the light right we don't eat each other um and so the real yashua was never never crucified and um he he taught what we're talking about like it's you you are you are that the word the etymology for the word savior is one who saves himself he taught that you have to save yourself no but he was anti-religion he was like us he was like anti-religion anti-government like really he was like there are controllers out there and they're gonna they're gonna wreck you if you don't have a control over who you are um he was yes. married to magdalene and she he had he didn't have 12 disciples disciples he had 70 students most of whom were women the church won't tell you that and he wasn't sleeping with them right which would make no. him a keith renary cult leader I'm just he was, his wife was magdalene he was married to magdalene they were she was the main teacher she was they had five children they don't list the, the children in the missing books about their names they just say five um because the the, the government didn't like him and so he knew that he kept his children safe that the government didn't but they he was never crucified guys they he he that's that's not what a, a god a loving god would do there's no price to be paid for your soul you were you weren't you weren't born broken you weren't born you were born you, you were born a fractal of god like you're not this is just a ride that's all it is and so and that was his teaching like you you know that the gnosis they were called the gnostics because that comes from mm -hmm. word gnosis there's gnosis and edio edio is outside knowledge gnosis is inner knowledge that that subtle knowing that's gnosis and that's what he taught 
was gnosis and you had to scientology is kind of a gnosis religion but they distort it in fact they albert says that the word scientology just to jump off that gnostic idea that you just said is scientology means knowing how to know that's kind of a mind fuck but it's my book know, distorted like, version like of the gnostic. academic knowledge where he's talking about more like but that no yeah, one plus it's a mind, what it's like it took me forever and word clearing it and everything what the hell does that actually mean but um scientology he stole a lot of stuff not just from yeah. crowley and stuff but it's very gnostic too yeah that's part of what attracted me to it yeah it's well that's what's going to get because people who are seekers are constantly going to be looking for stuff that helps them discover the truth of who they are with their soul and so many people are gonna i mean look at what happened to yashua who turned into jesus like look at the shit show that happened with that the word church I mean, I wish people would look this up. The etymology of church, it's a demonic name that means to, to put under hypnosis and feed off of. It comes from a demon name that puts people under hypnosis and then feeds off their souls. And how many people are so hell-bent on... And I ask people, do you believe in God or do you believe in religion? Do you believe in, a, in an organization? Or do you believe in a spiritual higher being? Because what is it Gandhi said? God has no religion. God has no religion, right? And somebody else said religion is the opium of the masses. It's much easier to take the pain away than yeah. to go with to go within. And then to not necessarily, and that's the thing about like Ram Dass says, you know, we're all trying to be somebody. Our whole life we're trying to figure out who we are. And we play this game. I'll pretend you're Doug if you pretend I'm Bryce. Wink wink. And we play these games. But really the whole point is to be nobody. Yeah. To, to just be. To just be in that state of being, there's a really great, I'll try to send it to you, Doug. It's a really great thing that, and Ram Dass passed away in two, 2019, right before the pan. He was old. I think he was like, I'm, I'm you out. you take the shot? <laughs> no, you no. Sure he didn't take the right, shot? No, it was right before. It was right before the pandemic hit. It was like December 2019. And he was like, he had been sick. And he was like, I was like, you know what? He was like, I'm my soul. I've, I've set you, I've set all these teachings up. You guys have fun with us. But anyway, there's this great um, spe speech he gave and I can send it to you, Doug. Somebody put it to music. It's very quick. It's like an eight minute. Sometimes I use it for like my meditations. And he talks about when we're just so, you, you don't worship the gate. You go into the temple. You don't worship the person. You don't worship you, your being. You go into the temple. You go inside yourself. You don't stop and worship the gate, right? And a lot of these religions are just gates. You go into yourself. You don't need a pastor. You don't need someone to tell you to be your inter intermediary between you and God. That's not, you are that carrier. Like you are that person. And he says, it's like you you go, you see this. I'll, I'm paraphrasing what he says. I'll send it to you. But he says, you know, this, this building gets burned down and you're standing in all these ashes. And all of a sudden you see this little fractal of a light that's still burning. And you take that little light and you start to make it bigger. And all of a sudden you're sitting around the campfire. And that's all you're doing. That's it makes me emotional. That's all you're doing is you're just sitting around a campfire watching your light, watching that fractal that got almost got destroyed by the ashes of people like L. Ron Hubbard or the church or whatever, your abusive partner, where you just become so small. And then all of a yeah. sudden something happens and you dig through those ashes, those ruins, and you find that tiny little light and you start to nurture that again and you build that yeah. that flame that is you again. And then you yeah. just watch it and you see that in others too. And you respect that light in other people as well. And, um, you know, it's beautiful. I'll text it to you once we get off Doug, because it's really beautiful the way that he, he talks about it. Um, and it's, you know, it's like the Ramayana. There's this great, great quote in the Ram Ramayana that Hanuman says, and he goes, you know, when I don't know who I am, I serve you. When I know who I am, I am you. And I think that's like a big, you, when you go through these, these, uh, these trauma, these tribulations in life, you connect with other people. Cause even though you don't go through the same, you don't have the same story, but you are that person and you know what that feels like, unless you're HD tutor yeah. and you, you don't know what that feels I like. know. And you only know it intellectually, you know, that's <laughs> another trippy thing. Like, how do I explain this? Like, so I was looking for spirituality. It was a narcissistic spiritual bypass in scientology yeah. but it was like if i'm looking for it the uh, the thing is this thing is so weird i would never gonna find it like remarkably the path that i went on itself accidentally led to that because what happened bryce for 10 years i was in a, another state of mind so dissociated so outside looking in and so traumatized and so many question marks going off in my head that during those 10 years it was like i lived a hundred lifetimes of experience because what i did 
my feelings were coming out. And then I would read authors to understand that I'm not alone and to get context. I read a ton of different stuff and my emotions were so raw. I could feel seeing things from their perspective. And then also, like I said, I was trying to be an actor. So it was, it already fit into having an excuse to do that, but seeing a million different viewpoints going through every emotion, but it wasn't intellectual like hg it was a living experience yeah, where it was empathy. i empathy. was in it i yeah. was like in it there's no way out and every day was like to get food it was super challenging and yeah. i don't want to do it again right. but i swear to god it was a hundred years of experience crammed into 10 years it was i came from being disassociated to finally grounded but minus the primal wound to start out with there was no adventure to be forced to see from so many different perspectives that when I do talk to somebody or interview somebody or just a person in general, sometimes I feel a little bit too much because I really can relate to yeah. anybody on, uh, that sounds like a Scientology thing. They have this, when you finish one of their grades, it's called, you're supposed to have the ability to communicate freely with anyone on any subject. Um, <clears throat> but I do feel like I can communicate with anyone on any subject getting out of Scientology. <laughs> it just gave me it. so many yes. different perceptions yes. that it's hard to go back to because there's gray in everybody and everything. And I see things. So sometimes people say, oh, you're being contradictory, but it's two things can be true at the same time. Like, Absolutely. you know, people have generally speaking good and bad in them or whatever. But you see on the internet or just what we're talking about with the controlled opposition, you know, Mike Rinder and the Headleys are kind of being attacked and Aaron's the good guy. So you just see everybody black and white turn on each other, As but there's that. all these shades of gray. Yeah. And without the experience that I went through, I would be pretty monotone and I would have missed a lot of experience so that I could be somewhat empathic and humbled to not, I mean, it really definitely cut the shit out of my ego, um, Bryce. I mean, I it's, it's good to have an ego, right? I'm not saying like it destroyed my, the positive well, part, purpose. but it, it definitely purpose, made me, yeah. I mean, I was in a cloistered environment. I had a cult leader. I had my parents, you know, they were a rich family. I could always depend on them being kicked out in the wolves, man, in the wilderness where I had to survive. And I had to hang with the bums and meet all these different people that I would never do otherwise. It really fucking like, um, put me in touch with, it's really hard to black and white anything anymore, man. And it's like, I, I do one, I'm thankful I actually had emotions, which I found out only when I got out of Scientology. And two, that 10 years that even though it sucked, I swear it was a living experience just reading these authors. Every conversation I have with people, it was a deep, deep experience going on because I was trying to heal that dissociate, the, all those fragmented parts of my mind. Yeah, And it was like um, an amazing experience. And then I think back short of the trauma, short of that primal wound, there would have been no exploration and I would have been the same person I started out as none the wiser. So I don't know. It's really weird. I, it's this thing I don't understand where it's a great gift, but it fucking sucked. And I, I'm trying poison. to avoid that a second time at all costs. It's it won't happen again because it's over. Of the poison. Yeah, it's it's what they say. It's because when you go down the path of, of spirituality, you go down the path of poison. And that's why you and see darkness so and yeah. pain and the whole nine. But there were, you know, Bryce, even though I was crying a lot of the times and it hurt, it felt so good in a way too. Cause I'm like, this is leading somewhere. This is healing me. This hurts and it never ends. And God damn it. I want out of this. But the other half of me, the only part that presented me from killing myself with a gun, cause it was, it, I wanted to suicide for a while is that at least, um, I don't have to understand it yet, but this is going somewhere. And I've never, I mean, I've never even thought that much pain or this many kinds of emotion or mental overload would even be possible. But hey, I'm still alive. I woke up again today. Let's continue on, even though there's no rhyme or reason. And then on the other side of this shit, it was a great experience. Yeah, it's you took that, that, that was a that whole ember thing. You found that little spark of fire amongst exactly. all the rubble and that this. little intuition that was yeah. the, the real me, the little boy, the, the everything I needed to actually follow and tap into, but it's hard to do in real life because it's a societal. You really, Br Bryce, I had to do a lot of things that were way outside of the societal norms. That's why I'm saying the voice is saying, do it, do it. And I'm like, that's crazy. But then I would do it. And it's like, it got me over so many of the little petty things that people bitch about that it's hard for me to 
take a lot of people seriously with because I, I got over that shit quickly when you're like i said when you really have to deal with real problems we talked about that last time i you're feel like i'm just thinking. rambling but i'm just saying no, 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 this is sometimes I, there can be a great gift to your listeners that might be oh, suffering I, or pain to actually go into that shit and not run away from it and take drugs and avoid emotions if you could like my emotions were the most powerful thing i realized that we have and also they're the things that can get you into the most trouble and cause you to fight and war and everything but those emotions if you can wrangle them you know they can be your greatest yeah. gift oh absolutely well that's the trigger the trigger people people get triggered when their yeah. programming is telling them one thing but their intuition and soul is telling them something else and that's yeah, all the time and when you break out of that finally it, you finally it's, just it's follow a freedom the soul. And that's and you were Doug, you were like breaking down as you were saying that like breaking societal norms while you were breaking down deconstructing two matrix at the same time that's so, and i would bounce back and forth bryce purposely i wasn't that's why i'm not a conspiracy theorist it was I, it's the last thing on my mind but it was organic i could bounce back at both of those back and forth do you know you what i mean thing or it was like everything was crumbling not just the scientology but like the whole your whole world view so you were breaking out of the the little cult scientology and the big cult which is the real world quote that's unquote. why it's taken me forever and that's uh the only that's a big difference between me and and the controlled opposition and the xc org or whatever they didn't generally speaking have a breakdown they carry that c org and scientology mentality with them not all of them i'm talking about the superstars in the community generally speaking the people that, that, that they most look up to like i was living out of my car in yeah. year 10 of getting out of scientology and i'm watching mike rinder the head of the office of special affairs that's the equivalent of the cia destroy right. people's lives for 22 years and while i'm living in my car i'm going where's the decompression process because he's in a smart suit on leah remney's show and he's got a lot of money they skipped that but that was the great gift and that was the yeah. part that i thought we were all getting when we came out of scientology so to bring it back to the very beginning of the conversation bryce because i was adding up the microcosm to the macrocosm mm -hmm. i two cults i thought that everybody else was also realizing that and that was the great gift of ex scientologists and we were going to save the world not in the scientology way um, not in a huge grandiose way but we were all surely having the same revelations that what we can see in the cult mind control we can see on the world stage not only does almost did nobody almost they still don't bryce they just yeah. go back to the normie world so that's why it's yeah. taken me fucking 15 years to get you know how the shit you have to read and the dots you have to connect it could it could just drive you crazy but but that's what was happening naturally man seeing yeah. the two juxtaposed against each other and going why the fuck are the ex-scientologists the same assholes as when I knew them when they were in the cult, generally speaking. But that's why, because yeah, they didn't people, actually go they through didn't, that. They didn't, they didn't deprogram, and people, well, human nature. It's not. It's not. I don't think it's conscious for a lot of people. The human body, human psyche, is going to avoid pain at all costs, and so it's going to do things to avoid pain at all costs. That's why drugs are so big. That's why. You know it, it's alcohol is shopping sex whatever it is they're going to do whatever so if it's going into the normie world and joining another cult or being in another community that's why you know i i, I think amy finding Scobie, jesus too man i exactly, mean that's, that's the, what i was about to say i love i think amy scoby is one of the sweetest women on, i don't know her off camera i know she, and I, she's a great example of what we're talking about bryce it's just what is it it's too much it's, it's so it, it's people think it's beautiful but i think it's crazy bryce it's sad it's like you had all these years out amy and you I, sound she, like <sighs> and she went straight into the church and i'm just like oh god amy and that's one thing yeah. I, I hear people say like david miscavige is you know that'd be like the pope punching people i'm like the pope traffics children what that's the right everything's like, inverted man and religion is the greatest form of mind control ever invented well, i swear I to god like research this stuff if you know that scientology is so bad research these other things too because you know like that's what upset me the most about amy when she was like i'm a christian now i'm like do you know that yeah. jesus is derivative from hail satan do you know that the bible that they, they call the bible that people have now that the, that the freemasons wrote with king james the slaves bible do you know that that this that you were in a demonic cult you were in another scientology mormonism christianity freemason these are all pillars of satanism so you hopped from one pillar pillar all the way over to the next pillar yeah maybe we don't do auditing and stuff like scientology does but look at what the how many people that the church has tortured over the years blood whip, ripping women apart 
right? Because because they were they were old women who lived in the side of the villages with no husband, so they deemed them witches and they hung them. You know, look at the, the, the and that's what I think that's Doug because you like step back and that's what that's one thing my boyfriend said about you when we first started watching your channel or he first started he was like this guy like gets it like he's he had his experience and then he stepped back and he saw these patterns in other organizations and so he started to use his critical thinking skills to connect the dots and that's what frustrates me the most it's like if you're if if this can happen in Scientology why can't this happen. Why can't you see that this is also happening in other areas of your life, in other religions, in other governments? Like we're talking about the process church and the animal. Best friends, animal society. Yeah. Sanctuary. On their, and they're part of an offshoot group of Scientology. It's like research this stuff. Like take the time. Take the time to process everything. And, and no you're right. Intended. I think, <laughs> No, no, process no. everything by the way that doesn't necessarily mean they're sacrificing dogs or whatever but it's very sus for you know that shouldn't be something leah remini is supporting because it is it used to be the satanic process church i mean just maybe stay away from it even if they are doing quote good please stop saying that's like the pope punching people because there are people i know personally who have been affected by the trafficking that the catholic church does i know whistleblowers and that hurts people when you yes when you there discredit that the catholic church scientology is going to take decades to catch up to the catholic church's uh pedophilia and abuse and everything oh i swear God. and then and then this is going to get me in trouble well i'm not going to say it but let's just say religions uh i'm thinking of one area right now it's used as i'm right you're wrong i have the right god right. so much war and bloodshed i think religion has been the main cause of uh, so much division in this world when if people could just calm down and literally yeah. realize that it's not that challenging like you said it's within you you don't have to come up with some new formula you no. just have to be willing to experience some pain and some emotions and not run away from it all into yeah, jesus no. saves or something it's can i ask you a question from an as an outsider and i don't want to yeah. bag on amy scoby here because she's a lovely lady but yeah. i was taken aback when she went on aaron smith levin's show and pronounced that she was in in you know a born again christian whatever she called it and she had that same lunatic dead-eyed stare uh, and excitement cool. that we had in scientology what do you think it's something lacking psychologically with Amy yeah, or something it's, uh, i think it's not wanting to deal with trauma i think it's running from one cult to the next i think it's not doing the due diligence of the research um i think that it it's part of that whole like scientology is bad and this is a church but this church is good when in reality yeah. they're all they're all 501c3 guys. And that's the thing too, like a nonprofit is a 501c3. That means it's under government control. So all of these churches are connected to the government. Right. And you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist. Right. Just do some research and just to realize that you cannot sit there. And I mean, it makes me so emotional because we're not even talking about just pedophilia. We're talking about things like pedivores. Do you know what that is, Doug? A pedivore? No, pedivore. No, I've never people heard that. People, people Should who, we word clear that real quick? No. What does that mean? I, Look Let's get out no. our dictionaries, Bryce, and we'll look up the <laughs> derivation. What does what that yeah, mean? I learned what that meant over this all this research. So that's the Dionysian cult, which is what the cult, hmm. what what the Christian cult is today. Hmm. So um, that's where Jesus comes from. It comes to the name Zeus, which is okay. The I do know about yeah. I and this is the start that. of Freemasonry. This is the start of secret societies that are based in the dark occult. The Dionysian cult would um, drink particular wines and would invite demons into them. They would learn how to like try to do things like shape shift. So they were inviting dark mm -hmm. energies in. and then they would do smut. And um, I don't know if you guys know what smut is. It's where they like, I don't know if I can say this on YouTube. It makes me sick to my stomach. They, are you talking like, about do snuff films or smut? That's are they the same it. thing as snuff? It's, it's where they hurt children in a sexual act and they kill them at the end. Yeah, snuff films. Then they eat Check the bot. Snuff. That's what and they eat that, the body. Yeah, it's pedophilia to get the power and the soul and all this bullshit. Yeah, the, the, they use young. They use and they do it to animals too. The purest among us. And mm -hmm. if you look at all these old, it makes me so emotional. If you look at all these old churches, like especially in Europe, they all have temples underneath the sanctuaries. Like you can look this up, guys. Like Mithra, look up Mithra temples underneath old. I've covered this. I think it's all on Rumble now. Um, Just like where they, this video is going. <laughs> Uh, maybe well i might oh, go through i don't it. think so i think we've been good boys and far girls end. right yeah i think we're too far in but um when a congregation 
is gathered in a church, there's an energy. This is spell casting, guys. There's an energy in the prayer and the songs and stuff like that. So these old cathedrals, they would gather the people into the sanctuary. And underneath them, they would be doing these rituals, harnessing the energy of the people above. Right. This is not conspiracy. Like they to give tours in Europe of these temples today. That they are still underneath. have them. There's underground tunnels, um, even all over LA. And then even the Scientology building has their underground tunnels beneath L. Ron Hubbard Way to get. Well, tunnels sounds it makes it sound all Q, Q and shit. No, there's tons of underground yes. shit just in Los Angeles. And then they also have an underground thing that goes under L. Ron Hubbard Way at the Scientology Big Blue Building oh, here in LA. I mean, Pat, was it Pat Robson? Pat Robinson? Well, the 700 Club guy. Oh, there's so many gu little boys that he was a very fundamentalist Christian guy that did this mm -hmm. show. That's fucking Put, scary. Yeah. And him. There are so many men now they, that they're men now, but they, they when they were little boys, they're coming out as whistleblowers that they were raped by him, trafficked by him. These are all people doing this in the name of Christianity. And I, it's a I great would ask, cover, as H.G. Tudor was talking about. Religion's a great cover. You know, he said he grew up a Christian or and would pr it was a great pretend thing to make him seem like he was a stand-up individual Exa know? exactly and so i would ask people like amy before you go proclaiming this new cult as you're now your saving grace you know and the, the thing that christians say a lot because i grew up presbyterian was that you're not going to go to heaven unless you accept jesus as your savior well here's the thing guys jesus means hail satan that's what it means that wasn't his name his name was yeshua not jesus they changed his name and it comes from the Zeus. So if we're talking about a demonic cult, when you're asking an energy to come into you, what are you doing? What is that? You know, I, I, Jordan Maxwell, who's one of the original researchers, he's passed away now and he had a hell of a life. Like, Oh, he, I remember but, Jordan. I thought you, I was just thinking Jordan Peterson for a minute. Yeah. Jordan Maxwell, man. Yeah. He has a great, I, I beg you, People that guy has some ast astonishing research, man. Astonishing. He was a researcher. That was the biggest compliment someone gave me a couple of years ago. They said, Bryce, you're the new Jordan Maxwell. And I was like, that is the biggest compliment. because that, yeah, that is a great comment because he's been fucking doing that for 30 years, man. And he's and he well, well read on all that, that stuff. He's like sitting in libraries. Like I know. He was the original OG on all this conspiracy stuff. Absolutely. And, there, and that was the first video that actually woke me up to the bigger, um, it was 2016. When we were in India, we take what we call oil baths. Have you ever heard of an oil bath, Doug? Mm -mm. It's a great- Do I want to? No. Well, it actually, it's it, it's very, what you do is you, we, we do it like at the end of the week before we have a rest day and you sit with like castor oil all over your body. You sit naked, like you know, I would put a towel out and cover my body with, and the castor oil pulls out inflammation basically. So it pulls out inflammation out of your skin. Out of, it, it's really, actually, I, I really want to get, you have the best sleep of your life that night for sure. Um, but it just kind of de, it's, and so when you first do it, you do it for like 10 minutes. But at, by that point, I'd worked up to like an hour at the end of the week. So I would put the castor oil all over me and I put my laptop off and I would watch stuff. And so I put on, my boyfriend had sent me like a documentary he wanted me to watch. And he'd been awake for a very long time, but he was like, I was asking some questions and I was curious. He was like, watch this uh, cult of, of Saturn. The Saturnalian Brotherhood, mm -hmm. but and it was like a 2001 lecture by and I'll if I can find it on YouTube, I'll place it in the description box below, guys. Mm -hmm. And I watched and I couldn't. It was so mind blowing what he was saying, and I was covered in castor oil, so I couldn't press my laptop to stop it. So it was like this cruel tr trick of God where I had to sit there and listen to, and it took me a year to process everything that i heard i was already was it jordan maxwell was it is this a lecture by him is that were you referring to yes. with the cult of saturn yes. yeah. cult of saturn which is the cult of satan comes from the saturnalian mm -hmm. brotherhood the rings why we wear wedding bands all that kind of stuff yeah i went it, I, I bet you we bend all down the same rabbit holes prices it's a long it was quite a while ago but i read all the books the maxwell's that you know that i remember all the whole getting mind blowing just every day man it's like it's like there's yeah. this whole body of knowledge out there that if yeah. people could just unglue from the TV, they don't know what they're missing, and it would make sense of the world that they live in. The real history of this planet is way more fucked up and way more juicy. Yeah, and, and I think it could be. It's not like the information is not there. It's just that it's censored off of. It's not totally censored, but you have to go looking for it. That's that's what I'm saying, Bryce. That's one of the things that kept me going. First, Steve yeah. Hassan's book with. Well, what's what's phobia indoctrination, mystical manipulation, hypnosis? Yeah. Like that was the basic. And then you run into people like Jordan Maxwell. He was pretty, pretty towards the beginning of my journey too. And then Kathy yeah. O'Brien and stuff. The thing yeah. that was kept me going was 
I was learning so much knowledge, symbolism, the subconscious. It all made sense, man. And I was like, where the Absolutely. fuck has this not like it was mind blowing. It's 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 incredible to read some of this stuff. And it calmed me the fuck down about uh feeling like an insignificant person and it, this occult shit makes so much sense and when yes. the world and then when you have people like jordan max well you know it doesn't mean he gets everything right i know people are going to go well you know he got the fine but the people that research this stuff or whatever there is a whole smorgasbord of knowledge that actually makes sense of the world and all the programming that if you don't come across it you don't even know what the fuck you're missing because exactly. it's fascinating man he and he is not like a truth like he like lectured he was a researcher he yeah. was like this is and he, just, and he, he was is before anybody else like you said hanging out yeah. at libraries and even got invited onto lots and shit to talk about this shit because this was mind-blowing his level of research he was blowing oh studio God. heads minds they would want to use his some of his stuff to put in movies and shit i mean he yeah. was he was well respected despite being a conspiracy theorist he was just just the level of intelligence and that's where i learned about studying etymologies of words to figure out mm -hmm. like, he's the one that, that where yeah. i learned the thing from and i looked it up my i would go look all this stuff up myself like what he would say i'd write it down and go look it up you mm -hmm. know and um the saturnalia why the the priest wear or the preachers wear black robes which mine did growing up and that's because yeah. they're sworn into the house of satan um that comes from the saturnalia and the black that's why judges wear black yeah and even the ring of saturn uh, as on the nike yeah. logo you you start yeah, to see like, you start to see the corporate logos from an occult point of view. Yeah, that's yeah. why the world were crowns because it's Saturnalian. And so yeah, I would exactly. just people like Amy Scobie, Leah Rema, before you make these statements that are so damaging, you know, you're talking about Scientology cult survivors. Well, there are cult survivors, there are adult people that went through the most horrific SRA with the Pope, with Billy Graham, who was a one hundred. Sorry to burst your bubble, guys. He was a fucking Satanist. Billy Graham. That guy's fucking evil, and you oh, can tell God. just by looking at these people. Some of these church guys are some of the most pedophilic, the evil-looking people, and they put off a bad vibe. Yes, and so you're saying that these people are so saintly and good, but yet you've got survivors who are testifying in front of the government to try to shut down some of these churches because of what's happened and they are going through the most traumatic experiences with with pastors and please be careful when you're saying that stuff just because you were in a cult doesn't mean that this group over here isn't a cult too so you have to be careful with that like you have to and i think that's what you did doug you kind of realized that if scientology got it wrong then who else got it? like there has to be a bigger 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 conspiracy here yeah you know? and coming across people like jordan maxwell and a thousand others that were actually explaining what was never explained to me before and it it made sense and there was no cults or gurus there was no one particular author it was everybody it was just like all of a sudden because i was interested in mind control and all that stuff through steve hassan's book there was this whole new world of knowledge opened up where my very first question almost on day one of waking up out of scientology and learning this why wasn't i taught this in school where was this knowledge that could set me free from scientology let alone the world and like you said you know leah remini not to bag on her but she's now a catholic so i think that they miss the bigger picture on the world stage they don't yeah. come across this occult knowledge it's see it's it's means hidden it doesn't mean evil right but it is kind of hidden because i didn't know anything about this while i was under hubbard's spell so unless they see the bigger picture a leah remini and a navy scoby or a chris shelton who's an atheist they never connect the dots and they think that the world is sane or somewhat rational compared to scientology not realizing that it's almost exactly the same as a cult yeah it's just do you get lucky enough to get the information to make it your business to i fa i fell in love with this information man i couldn't it's, get it's enough of it i i yeah. don't anymore because i i got enough of a picture where i'm not obsessed with this but i told but, you last time full time is a full-time study bro it's like i put everything oh, wow. on hold and i just i was so into this shit. i so wanted to know because i felt like jesus christ man i mean i thought i was getting the truth for most of my life and i realized everything was inverted and i actually fucked myself up in scientology but that gave me a desire to know the truth, whatever it turns out to be. And all of a sudden, just naturally, synchronistically and organically, 
I just fell down these rabbit holes and e each information would lead to the next thing. And just, it was all making sense, man. And I was it's, like, yeah. where have you been all my life? <laughs> once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's the thing yeah. about, about once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. And that's just what I would really, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of good people in the church. I want to make that clear. It's the church. Yeah, that's good point. I'm glad you said that. So we well, don't get lambasted. Right. And but, I'm not but, saying but, but like, but like you said, sorry to interrupt Bryce, but I, I forgot that point. Like you said, like, Leah would be preaching, just to use her as an example, you know, how good the Catholic Church is. Oh, rah, rah, you got out of Scientology. Meanwhile, there's ex-Catholics that are cringing because that's offensive yeah. to, to to cult survivors that when they don't connect the whole picture, they, you know, they, you, they're offending other people, you know, right. or, or Amy Scobie. I, I feel like I'm just ragging on these people, but you know what I'm saying? Short of connecting the dots and getting some perspective and pulling back you're very likely uh because it's a lot to sort out right and there's a lot of bullshit going on but short of that how the fuck are you not going to wind up into another fake belief system that's why i was so paranoid took my time and i'm like i'll fucking make this my full-time job i just want to before i roll out of here i got to be good with myself i have to put my mind back together again um because i don't want to join another cult and like i said bryce i thought that was very obvious to all of us coming out of the cult it was heartbreaking to find out that that wasn't happening they're going most of them if not all just go back to the normie world they don't question dick when i thought that was the big revelation that you'd have coming out of a cult at least that's what was happening to me man and not trying to do anything that's just what naturally happened exactly i i 100 percent agree with you because i think when you know i and i think that is is because as you're saying that i'm thinking about like the church like going from one extreme where scientology is saying this is the way to save yourself this is the way to whatever and then you go to the church where they're saying the only way to save yourself is to accept this belief system so it's yeah. going from basically one external belief system to another external belief exactly. system in order to find your own salvation and you can have a relationship with god you don't need a religion to have a relationship with the divine at all i would even fact, say if you're in a religion you're not going to be having a relationship with the divine it's almost the opposite I, please, you guys watching, watch the new documentary, Let Us Pray, Shiny Happy People. There's all these yeah, documentaries out that are about the Christian sub subculture. There are a lot of Protestants that are like, oh, it's the Catholics. They're the bad ones. And the Catholics right. are – no, it's all the same fucking Bible. It's all the same – you know, the Vatican, even though the Protestants tried to break away from the Catholic Church a few years ago – the Pope called in all the money from the Protestant churches. So what does that tell you, my friends? Critical thinking skills. If the Pope is able to ask for money – for the money to be called in from the Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Episcopalian churches, what does that tell you? They're under the knee of the Vatican. Even though they're not on paper Catholic, they're owned by the Vatican. Vatican means head of the snake. Right? Read the missing books of the Bible. They, they, they built the Vatican on Peter. No, 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 you guys. In the missing books of the Bible, it was willed that when, he, when Yahshua would pass away, not by crucifixion, that it would go to his brother James, which I don't know what his real name was because it wasn't James, and Magdalene, his wife. Doug, if you had a, a business, let's say a school, a, a martial arts school, something, and you were married and you were, and it was a, a pretty decent business and you were writing your will out, um, who would you leave the school to? Would you leave it to your wife and your family or would you leave it to some schmuck, some narcissistic schmuck that was in your school? To my family but when you're in a cult like scientology or some other ones you uh skip the inheritance going to the kids and it goes all to the cult so that's what they did with peter peter was a fucking psychopath if you read the even the bible peter was abusive towards women he was a total narcissist that is not so is the god God of the old testament that reads like a straight the, narcissist you the, must the, do the what i say yeah you the have god to follow of the these rules yeah yeah, the God of the Bible is not cr source creator. It's the Elohim, which is is the the, the fallen ones, the demons. Right. And the, the Old Testament, you know, people call God Jehovah. That's the name of a demon, y'all. Yeah, uh, Yahweh is Moloch. And which, you are definitely getting rid of your Christian audience, but I, I can't had, argue with you. I, I know what you're talking I about. Of, I had one. Well, I think I was telling you, I had one older gentleman, a fundamentalist, obviously, sent me an email and told me that he was a man. So therefore, as a man, he had the power invested in him by God to command me to shut my channel down. <laughs> and if that isn't narcissism to the extreme, which is what I have that email safe. That's so crazy. I, but I will say, Doug, in speaking the truth, because I'm going to tell the truth, like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like I love. The real Yahshua, the real Magdal, these real people that wrote these were, they had beautiful writings that were not, it's not at all what the church is teaching, right? It's not at all. And so 
I love humans and I don't want people. I, I know there are so many people who've been hurt by the Christian church. I know that. I, that's how I grew up. I know people have been raped by their youth pastors. I know that. And so I, I'm by putting this information out, I know I'm going to lose the fundamentalists and I lost them a long time ago, but I have such yeah, an incredible too. community here on Esoteric Atlanta of people who um, are coming out of the church and they've met each other and they're still seeking to have that relationship with the divine, but without the constraints of the religion. Mm -hmm. And so it's been this beautiful thing for, and I, I have to applaud all my subscribers for that because, you know, I, I try not to get, I try to let them kind of, you know, I don't, I want them to find this information for themselves, but it's, it's been beautiful with it. If you let the truth come out, it is going to cause ripples and triggers but it's going to do what it needs to do and it's going to heal a lot of people too and so for anybody watching right now um if you have been abused by the church i just want to tell you that i believe you i believe that i believe you and what happened to you was not okay and you are not loved any less by source creator or divinity even though you might feel like it because of what the, the church is made by man not by god right i don't even think the real Yahshua would be welcomed in the church. So I think they would. They would no, <laughs> just just like anybody who tries to tell the truth gets jumped on, censored or everything. That's why I think this world's weird. I would need to see it to believe it. And if it would have said everything's inverted and upside down, I'd be like, nah, you're kidding me. And here we are, because it really is like are. that. Well, it's um, I will say there's a great Gandhi quote. Um, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ right 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 so at the end of the day guys like nobody and that's why i hate the whole prophet people are prophets people are this you don't know well You're you don't believe jeff and is of uh, <laughs> twin flames universe is jesus christ reincarnate i mean that's what he said in shalia you know i mean you don't buy it so he looks like and you know who that painting is you know, know. who the jesus is right is cesare borgia Cesare Borgia was the illegitimate son of one of the popes, and and he was a lover of Leonardo. Uh, Leon, I was about to say Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio, Da Vinci. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Maybe. Uh, so that he was. Uh, you're, uh, you're. You've had paintings of the Jesus with the Pantene Pro V hair and the blue I eyes. I know. Like, we don't even know that he looked like that. It's just the image of the beard and 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 the and the long hair. Like, like and and you know, i'm like i walk in people's houses or churches and see that painting and i'm like you got a painting of cesare borgia in your house and like dude it was scandalous like cesare borgia like showtime did a full-on showtime did a full-on series on the borgias if showtime is going to do a series on your family oh, you got right. right. so the two so anyway guys well, Doug, we are at almost at like two hours now. Yeah, so. this has been an awesome conversation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, well, y'all, we're gonna do way, way more of these. We got, we, I, we, we heard. Ask and you. That is a verse in the Bible. Ask and you shall seek. Seek. Ask and you shall find. Oh uh, no. Uh, seek and you shall find. Ask. Knock and the door shall be open unto you, or something like that. So you guys asked, and we're gonna be doing way more. We're gonna be doing another episode with Catherine Edward Edward soon over hypnosis. That's gonna be exciting. Yeah, that'll be cool. We're going to do the um, Twin Flame universe again with Steve. So um, so you guys, uh, please, once again, go if you're on my channel, go over and make sure you are subscribed to Doug on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble, um, because you never know what's going to happen on these platforms. So just make sure, especially when you're people like Doug and me, that you've got the backup channels, that you're subscribed, just in case all of a sudden you can't find us one day, you know where to find us. So anyway, guys, um, Doug, is there any parting words you want to say to our friends watching right now? Just thanks, Bryce. Another amazing conversation. Um, and I really looking forward to that Twin Flames one because I'm kind of into that right now. I find it fascinating. It'll be a good thing to use to, as you've already done, to break down, to show how simple it can all be and how people's vulnerabilities can be on. I really want to do the hypnosis one to break down more of the psychology and stuff. So just thanks for having me on and very much looking forward to the future stuff. Absolutely. And thank you so much for being so diligent in your work and so willing to put yourself out thanks. there. Thanks. You too, Bryce. It helps people. And, you know, and we're all just walking each other home. That's another Ram Dass quote. We're all just trying mm -hmm. to figure it out together, guys. Please just know that none of us all have the answers. We're all seekers. And and that's okay. You know, it's okay to not have all the answers. Just know that that you aren't broken. Like, your soul is fine. And and you're not you're not what um, whatever somebody has told you you are is not never the truth. Don't ever don't believe everything you think. Right. You know, it's it's um you don't need a cult leader. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a religion to be okay. All you need is you 
And that is enough. And um, I'll actually end on this. My um, babysitter growing up, we would go to South Carolina to the summers, spend our summers with my mom's family on the coast of South Carolina. We'd have this babysitter. And she would say, I have, let me, how to go? I have 10 little fingers, 10 little toes, two eyes, a mouth, and a nose. Put it all together. And what do you got? You got me, babe. And that's a lot. And that's something my babysitter used to say to us. And we, were, we would say it back with her. She was probably the one adult in my life that was, that was really regulated. So, so just remember that, guys, that little kids, that little kids uh, poem. You, that's all you need is you. You're enough. You're absolutely enough. So anyway, Doug, thank you so much again for doing this. And I look forward to future conversations too. And I will say, guys, if you have any other topics you want us to talk about or dive into, just put them in the comment section cool. um, and we'll go for it. So, all right, Doug, we'll have a wonderful night, you guys. Um, I, think I, I think I'll be airing this on Thursday. So have a safe and happy weekend upcoming. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.